The learning objectives of this short video will be to define the parts of a fold, to describe the major types of folds, to identify folds based on outcrop pattern and relative age. As the Earth's crust experiences compression, folds can form as the crust is shortened and thickened. This is analogous to pushing on the ends of an area rug and seeing the wrinkles that form on the rug. Commonly, this occurs along zones of convergence, but can occur within a plate as well, as parts of the plate experiences compression. There are just a few pieces and parts of a fold that are important to recognize. First, we'll look at the axial plane and the hinge line. The hinge line is a line drawn down the points of maximum curvature of each layer. Do you see that it's located in the center of the fold? The axial plane is an imaginary surface that divides the fold symmetrically, and it divides it into two limbs. The limbs refer to the two sides of the fold. The two most common types of folds are anticlines and synclines. Anticlines, as you can see on the right, are examples of upturned folds. Synclines in the center are examples of downturned folds. It's often the case that we see anticlines and synclines in pairs, as we see in this road cut image. The anticline is located on the left, and the syncline is located on the right. Take a quick look at the image of the anticline at the top of this slide. Do you notice that the axis of the, of the fold is flat and horizontal? This is called a non-plunging fold because the fold axis is horizontal. When this is the case and the anticline experiences erosion, a particular outcrop pattern will occur on the surface of the earth. In the larger image, do you see that this is an anticline as well? Notice that the top of it has also been eroded and we see exposure of the interior of the anticline. As the surface is eroded, this non-plunging fold will form parallel outcrop patterns, as noted in the red lines. This is a picture of the bentonite open cut mine from the Cretaceous Maori Formation, which is a small syncline in Sheep Mountain, Wyoming. Notice the parallel outcrop pattern that is formed as this non-plunging fold has been eroded. Not all folds are non-plunging. Note that the top fold on this image is non-plunging, like those that we've seen in previous slides. Do you see that the eroded surface will produce parallel outcrops? In the case of a plunging fold, as those seen on the bottom of this image, the fold axis is no longer horizontal. As this type of fold is eroded, rather than parallel outcrops, the pattern we will see will be a U shape. In this case, this is a plunging anticline, although synclines can also be plunging and form similar outcrop patterns. Here in this image, we see an eroded surface of the earth. Note the outcrop pattern. Would you expect this outcrop pattern to be a plunging or a non-plunging fold? It's a plunging fold, as you can see by the U-shaped outcrop pattern. We can also consider relative geologic age when looking at outcrops and trying to determine whether the outcrops are anticlines or synclines. Note that in this block diagram that we see an anticline. The younger rock layers of this anticline are found on the limbs of the fold, as we can see on the geologic map on the top of the block diagram. Also note that the older rock layers are found along the axis of the fold. In the case of a syncline, like this block diagram, it's the opposite. Notice that the older rock layers are found on the limbs of the fold, while the younger rock layers outcrop along the axis on the geologic map on the top. Another type of fold that can form in areas of compression is known as a monocline. 
monoclines form as large step-like folds and otherwise horizontal sedimentary strata, and they only have one limb. Monoclines are often the product of a reverse fault that has occurred somewhere deep in the crust. Sometimes the sedimentary rocks above the fault can deform as a ductile solid, folding over the fault to produce a monoclinal fold. This is a picture of a well-known monoclinal fold present in western Colorado at the Colorado National Monument. Notice the dipping limb. Two other types of folds are domes and basins. Be careful not to uh, confuse these with valleys and hilltops. It is often the case that domes, structural domes and basins form different landforms on the surface rather than valleys and hills. A structural dome, like that seen on the left, is an upward displacement of rocks. It forms a circular or slightly elongated outcrop pattern. Do you see that the outcrops are in circles rather than parallel outcrops or even a U-shaped like we've seen in previous folds? In this case, the oldest rocks in the structure are outcropping in the center of the structure, while the youngest rocks are outcropping on the outside of the structure. In the case of the structural basin on the right, we see circular or slightly elongated structure forming again, but due to an, a downwarping. The younger rocks in this case are found near the center, and the older rocks are found on the flanks of the fold.